The Splash Brothers have hit game winners with 0.2 seconds left in back-to-back -back games, as first it was Clay's mid-ranger off a Draymond dime, and then it was a Steph runner on a downhill attack that was nearly a Draymond basket interference, improving to an NBA best 4-0 away from home. The Dubs lost 8 straight on the road to start last season, and didn't win 4 games away from Chase Center until January 13th. They've done that already through 6 games of the year in 23-24. But we're going to talk about how the in-season tournament is evidently raising the stakes, a Croatian clinic from Dario Saric, and a lot more. Keep it here. But just 11.7% of you watching are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, press subscribe, turn on notifications, and do me a massive solid by hitting thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. I'm liking the idea of having tournament games on Tuesdays and Fridays, and then getting the regular court games in between, leading up until the 18 bracket for Vegas is officially set on November 28th. Friday's average margin of victory was 4.9 points according to the NBA's social media, which is the second smallest on a single night in the last 10 seasons. Competitiveness was at a high level, and given there's only 5 games of group play for each team throughout November, and only the top team advances in each group plus a wild card in each conference, this tourney raises the stakes to a level we've never seen this early in the year before, and you can't complain about that if you're a true sports fan. Thankfully for Dub Nation on the path towards the NBA Cup, the Warriors' big three of Curry, Thompson, and Green having competed in an NBA most 140 playoff games since 2015 gives them a massive advantage in the final stages of any given Western Conference Group C performance. And on both ends of the floor to win their fifth straight game overall in the franchise's inaugural in-season tournament matchup, that experience paid off. Down three with just over a minute left, the Young Gloves' rare pick-setting ability for a 6-2 guard comes in handy, as a high ball screen action sees Steph split the double of Dort and Giddy, then duck in around the contact of Chet while having to worry about a top defender in Lou chasing him down, and if that's any other superstar, that's an and one with all due respect. Watch Steph and Clay intelligently switch off the ball to stop OKC from attacking any potential mismatch. That's great heads up awareness. J-Dubs forced into an isolation, and the gloves combo of backpedaling quickness and body strength for his height come to fruition as he springs off his lead foot to cut off J-Dubs driving angle and force the TO. Good hands from Clay to snatch and get fouled, KT stayed composed for a pair at the stripe to put the Warriors in front, but a should have been charge on Chet was then called a block, and the phenom out of Gonzaga put Oklahoma back up. However, the dubs responded with a kick and relocate action where Dre fakes the shuffle pass elusively to bait Chet, gaining him the step to set up GP2 in the dunker spot. The dubs are undefeated with Draymond so far, and against the Kings before this passed out and Green executed in the clutch as well. With a minute 30 left and down 3 in that game, he found Clay on the back door to execute a horns action. In drop coverage, he rejected Monk in malicious fashion, and down one in the dying seconds had the presence to realize Steph being flanked by Barnes, so instead, pass faking to Steph and finding Clay curling around the perimeter with an overhead pass to his pocket. Clay tops it at three. Clay for the win. Good! Dort gets two defenders jumping before hitting one of two to tie the game, allowing the dubs to run down the clock on a Steph clearout where a tween behind tween cross combo catches Dort both reaching and leaning. Curry sidestep, Curry drive, Curry flip, Curry good! With two tenths again! Draymond was inches away from ruining a Curry game winner as it was initially waved off. But another brutally long review was followed by a dramatic announcement from Crew Chief Mitchell Irvin, determining that Green's touching of the basket didn't have an impact on the ball going in, and that Steph's lay-in was good. The vibes would then maximize as you'd expect. You can tell these veteran warriors are getting a kick out of this new tournament system. With point differential factoring in for the play-in tournament, it helps the dub score to hefty 141. But of course they've got OKC right on their heels in that aspect. One of the primary contributors was Dario Saric, who's been a beyond effective backup small ball 5. The Croatian sensations posted consecutive 15 plus point showings, culminating in a 20 piece off the bench for the in season opener in Oklahoma. Super Dario's career has reached another level in the Bay, as his smooth release, paired with his durability and adaptability up front, has, as Kerr said, opened up a new dimension for this team. 
Dario's gone from being a forgotten journeyman to making a name for himself with a championship organization, which is great to see for a former lottery pick in his prime. Even though he's not a natural five-man, Dario will still have to carry a ton of weight off the bench up front behind Kevon Looney. The roster's lone legit center outside of Looney and Jackson Davis was optioned to Santa Clara, along with Pojemski and Quinones. Draymond reacted to that post-game, saying the team needs their youngins, alluding to that the energy would have been a lot better with Trace, Brandon, and Lester. And also in terms of needing those guys, as I've harped on, Dario can at times use some support down low based on matchups, so having Trace specifically would be valuable, but I love to hear that statement from Green standing up for the importance of the team's young talent. First with Curry jersey swapping with Chet, and also Steve Kerr stating OKC's next up in the Western Conference, there's evident respect between these two Group C opponents. You can't forget about Moses Moody. Without the shots that Moses made, the Warriors probably wouldn't have won, as his poise on the road, that's a great sign. Same thing for Jonathan Kaminga, as it was a season-high 19-point performance from Moody's fellow third-year pro. Chris Paul, meanwhile, has made his return to three organizations over the past four games, going from Houston to New Orleans and then Oklahoma City. CP3 made those squads better instantly upon his arrival, and he's doing the same thing for Golden State. With 54 dimes to just 6 TOs, CP's domination of the flow has been masterful and all-time great for a player coming off the bench. Third in the NBA in assist to turnover ratio, it's an underrated statistic that even the deadliest sniper the game's ever seen in Curry has said he's quote-unquote super jealous of. CP has certainly added a crucial element of beyond top-notch decision-making that's few and far between. Best play of the game, in my opinion, was this one-handed over-the-shoulder no-look lob from Curry to Peyton II, who finished with an insane reverse. Curry and Peyton have connected on a countless amount of them since Young Glove's arrival in 2020, and this one was without a doubt the flashiest. I want to know in your opinion, though, who was the X-factor of the first tourney game for Golden State? Let me know for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shout out goes to Bose who gives his take on the Warriors being able to silence the doubters saying the acquisition of CP was better than I gave it credit to be. It's made the bench more versatile, Paul's getting everyone involved and there's exponentially more ball movement leading to easier buckets. In the Rockets game, CP3 had 8 points in 20 plus minutes. If Jordan Poole had that same production, the Warriors would have lost by 15. But due to the flow of the offense CP3's brought, it takes a lot of pressure off Steph in the start having to play heavy minutes, as the reserves can maintain or even build leads of their own. Well written take right there from Bose, appreciate every take, DFlow signing off.